well, well, it looks like the Philadelphia Eagles. That, I mean, look, it's after business hours, and Howie Roseman is still working the phones, is still trying to get deals done, and the Eagles go into free agency on the fourth day, and they pick up another linebacker. Devin White is a Philadelphia Eagle. And I want to go over the press conferences of Zach Vaughn, Saquon Barkley, and Bryce Huff as well. A lot of things we need to talk about here, so let's get straight into it. Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. So there is plenty to be happy about. That not only is Howie Roseman been changing the philosophy at running back, signing Saquon Barkley to a multi-year deal, you know, at $12 million per year. But, man, I mean, I got to respect the fact that you pick up Zach Vaughn, a nice big scheme fit, and then you go out and you get Devin White on the fourth day of free agency. You get Devin White in Philadelphia, okay? Now, a lot of Eagle fans are already shitting on this whole entire idea. Okay, you're getting leadership. You're getting a guy that really hasn't played well as of recent. Um, I mean, if you go, you know, PFF, it's not great. You know, I think he's given up 80% in coverage, which isn't, which isn't good. Uh, 26 years old, guys, a guy that's going straight into his prime. Okay, uh, the fifth overall pick in 2019. Okay. Best year was probably 2020, 140 tackles, as it says, nine sacks, four pass deflections. Missed, hasn't missed many games, um, 13 plus games every every single year. Um, 34th in coverage last year among starting linebackers per PFF, 39th in 22, 40th in 2021. Okay. I think he was ranked like 80 out of 80, 82 out of 86 linebackers, which wasn't great. Didn't play a lot. Got beat out of his starting role last year. And I don't know if it was coming off of the foot injury that he had, but I know he he got back and you know he lost his starting spot. Um, this is a guy that's wanted out of Tampa Bay, um, unfortunately. And and to be honest with you, like during that playoff skit that he had with Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he played fantastic. Throughout the playoff run, he played great. Uh, and had the, the last pick in the Super Bowl versus the Kansas City Chiefs, which was pretty cool. So he had a really good playoff stint, but he hasn't been consistent really since he's been drafted. He really hasn't had consistent years, hence why he's not getting the deal. He wanted a big deal, what, a couple years ago? Um, you know, they picked up his option. Um, they picked up his option. They didn't give him the big deal, and I think he was pissed off that they didn't give him a, a you know a, a bigger deal. And now he gets to go to a new team, kind of revive his career, okay? Um, I think Eagle fans need to give this a chance. I think people are saying he's washed, but this is the most athletic linebacker, okay, we have right now on this roster, okay? He's got a ton of potential. And everyone, I, I think a lot of people think he's like a lot older, but he's not. He's 25 years old, like 26, whatever. I mean, he's in his prime now. And, you know, this is a deal worth $7.5 million. A lot of, I'm hearing that, the old, by the time you watch this, the numbers will probably already be out, but there's a lot of incentives in this in this deal, a lot of incentives. So it's probably a very minimum, like three, four you know, million dollar deal, okay? Um, with a lot of incentive base this way, you know, he kind of works for what he wants. Um, you know, it's the fourth day of free agency. You know, he's not a high caliber linebacker right now. He didn't have a good season last year. Kind of got his job stolen away. But I think this is a guy that really needs a new beginning, a new team, a fresh start. A lot of players really need that. He wanted that multi-year extension last year. He didn't get it. He ended up getting, um, you know, the fifth-year option picked up, and a deal was never done, okay? Um, I think he's been unhappy in Tampa Bay really since the Super Bowl with Tom Brady. I don't think he's really been himself. I don't think he's played at high caliber. His coverage has been bad. Uh, as a downhill tackler, as leadership, as a voice, um, he is fantastic. Uh, you, you, the, the Eagles are bringing in guys that have different personalities that really come out, and this is one guy that definitely has it, uh, being with the Philadelphia Eagles. This is a fantastic, underrated signing that could work out. A low-risk, high-rewarding um, and this could be a guy down the road, you know, one year deal. I know people don't like it, but this is what you kind of have to do with a guy like this to where you give this guy a chance, let him prove himself. And who knows at the end of this year, if he plays monstrous, he could be 
okay? A, a guy that gets a bigger contract, okay? He hasn't lived up to being the fifth or fourth overall pick, whatever he was, okay? He hasn't lived up to it. It's not consistent every year. It's it's up, then it's down, then it's down, then it's up. It's just, it's, it's way too inconsistent, and I totally get it. Not the best in coverage, but during certain situations when he's coached right, it just seems like he plays so much better, okay? And, man, this guy's got the athletic ability. I mean, I, I this guy is like a, a, heat, a heat-sinking missile when he tries to make tackles and the physicality he brings, the voice he brings to a defense. I'm telling you. And, you know, I mean, Eagle fans want to sign a linebacker. You sign one. I mean, I mean, it's not an all-pro that you're signing because Howie Roseman that is, that wasn't, you know, he passed up on a lot of linebackers. I don't think this will be the only move. Maybe you have Aquara on this roster as well as Zach Bond and Nicobe Dean and Ben Van Simmeren. So uh, Aquar is another flashy type linebacker that hasn't been put in a good position uh, in his career, but shows a lot of signs of what his ceiling can be. So I think the Eagles have done a very good job, more than I thought they would do at linebacker. And yeah, the draft is a whole nother thing too. Edwin Cooper is on a visit right now, and they could add more to this group. Um, so I think Eagle fans really need to give this a chance. I think these to put into the right system. I think, I think flat out, you're going to get a monstrous player with Devin White this year, a new background, a fresh start. That's what he needs. I don't think he's been right in here being in Tampa Bay all season. You know, the last few seasons haven't been great. Um, the Super Bowl year was fantastic. He had a really good playoff run. He played amazing in that playoff run. Amazing. So there is something there to pull out. But I think going to a new team, new system, just like I said, for the third time, a fresh start is what Devin White needs. And I think it's, it's, it's a very underrated signing that a lot of people are shitting on right now. And I hope I prove all you guys wrong what Devin White is going to do. So that is the news on Devin White and Howie Roseman. Fantastic job. I cannot wait to see this come together. Okay, so Saquon Barkley, uh, the rest of, of some of the free agents, and Zach Bond and Bryce Huff um, had their press conference with the Philadelphia Eagles today. And I got to say, you know, uh, he had his press conference. You know, say, we'll go to Saquon Barkley before anything because Saquon had a lot of really great things to say. And I got to say this, you know, Saquon Barkley is one of the most well-respected most uh most well respected professionals in the game today. Okay. I have to give that to him and, and how he carries himself. He was shaking the hands of every media member. Uh, you know, he pulled up in the SUV and man, I gotta say, the smile on his face and how happy he looks to be in Philadelphia is I, giant fans are gonna be jumping off a bridge really soon because <laughs> because watch this press conference probably did not make them feel really good. Um you know, so there was like eight, nine people waiting for Saquon Barkley at the front of the NovaCare. Brandon Graham came out, you know, to, to congratulate him and welcome him. And that's what Brandon, Brandon Graham is a, a, a kind soul. We know, how, we know how he is. Um, now, going to obviously the press conference and talking about the illegal tampering, okay, from uh, what's his face from Penn State, you know, because, because you know, I don't know why, like, this guy even said any of this, that, that, that Howie Roseman talked to Saquon Barkley directly before the tampering period began, and Bar Saquon Barkley was at the press conference for the Eagles and said that, no, that never happened. Uh, Howie Roseman talked to the agent, and that's all that happened, okay? There was no illegal tampering involved in this. So uh, all the Giant fans that were like, give us a first-round pick, that's not fair. They're trying to grab as much straws as possible, uh, you know, to get as much uh, from us. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's just so like, dude, like, why are you blaming the player? Blame the front office that that offered – I mean, seriously, if your front office doesn't value a guy like Saquon Barkley, blame them. And because he goes to the Eagles, everyone's going to have a hissy fit over it. How many players leave the Eagles to go to other teams? And, like, I don't ever blame the player most than half the time. Okay, so it's just kind of ridiculous. I, and I know, guy, I, know, I know people are hurt over it, but they didn't want to pay him. They never matched the offer, never even tried to match the offer, or at least contacted Saquon during the process in free agency, and he signs with, with a division rival. And it was funny. There were some crazy things that he said here. Now, number one, uh, his number. He was going to wear his college number. It looks like he will wear number 26, which is great. Um, he said it was weird wearing Eagle stuff, even putting a hoodie on, and his daughter in Eagle's gear, and 
uh, you know, I, I know it's probably the weirdest thing ever, but I think the number one thing he said about signing with the Eagles is the front office, the organization. The um, When you play a team twice a year and you know what players are there and you see what running backs are successful, the bread and butter for the Eagles is obviously the run game because they've always had a thousand yard rush for the last couple of years. Obviously, his teammate from Penn State, Miles Sanders, that him, they've talked before this press conference. They were, they were talking in the process. Uh, Miles Sanders, you know, told Saquon about the organization, about the players, about how it feels there, how they treat you there. So Miles Sanders had a really big hand, um, you know, in, in what Saquon is getting himself into coming to the Eagles and all positive things, which is great. You know what I mean? Uh, but knows the offensive line, knows the weapons, knows everything around. OK, uh, Saquon is going to have the time of his life and all Saquon wants to do as of right now. OK, he wants to be remembered. OK. Um, he wants to really turn the tides, um, with his career. Okay. He said, oh, the Eagles were 11 and six. And, you know, that was like, they were 11 and six at one point. I mean, I mean, that's like a bad year. That's a down year for them. Just imagine what I could do. You know, um, you know, he's just, he just feels like, uh, he's cared for. He feels like he has value. He says he feels like a rookie again, that he's coming in and, you know, it's a new background, it's a new team. And, um, you know, I'm not saying he has anything bad against the Giants. He did he did say he was sorry to the Giant fans, or not sorry, but to tell them that, you know, he appreciated all the support they has given him. But I don't think he has deserved what he's gotten from them. But you know, it is what it is. He'll he'll go to a more passionate fan base that will tell it like it is, um, like we always do. Um, you know, and uh, you know, I he, he must have talked to Jay on Hurst because, you know, uh, Saquon Barkley says he is happy, the business part is over, and it's all about football now. Quote, unquote, we keep the main thing the main thing. So, you know, him and Jalen Hurts, that's Jalen Hurts' language. You know, he's been talking to Jalen Hurts um, like crazy. Um, but, you know, Saquon Barkley's excited. I'm excited. I think we're all excited to see, like, you know, as a three-down back coming to Philadelphia, even even answer the question off of um, – uh, off of the, you know, uh, the Eagles haven't had a three down back in a while. I mean, it's been years since the Eagles had a three down back. It's been years since they've gone to this position when it comes to putting money uh, into it, uh, long term, especially, uh, you know, 12 million a year is, is for two, you know, obviously 12 million a year for two years, third year is an option, 3.9 cap hit for Saquon Barkley. Uh, but he seemed like he was generally just happy. Uh, and, he said he was a part of the wrong side of the rivalry for, for uh, the past couple of years. So, you know, he's taking shots at the Giants. I mean, he wasn't taking shots, but, you know, he's been on the wrong side of the rivalry. I mean, he thinks he can win with the Eagles. And I know he can win with the Eagles. To have a back like this, you might not, you might not even have to sign another back, to be honest with you. But the way you could use him and... You know, it's kind of crazy. So if he thinks he's been part of, you know, on the worst side of the rivalry for the past couple of years, well, he got on the right side because the Eagles own the Giants regardless. So um, I know Giant fans are hurt. I know Eagle fans are happy. I know we're all excited. I know this was a move we didn't really expect. It was a nice outside the box type of move that, you know, was, I, you know, I've, I've talked about it, but never thought it would be real. And, and it happened. So good for Saquon. Glad, you know, he got his, you know, kind of got things off his chest and, you know, now all the crazy stuff is is gone. He can relax and he can focus on the offseason. Him and Jalen Hurts will be working their asses off of the offseason. You know it's going to happen. Uh, Saquon always has crazy offseason uh, you know, workloads to do. Um, get himself right. Get himself better. And um, I think he's going to do a fantastic job. And uh, can't wait to, I can't wait to see him play. Can't wait for the first snap already for Saquon Barkley. Um, now going into Bryce Huff, which was, you know, getting paid 17 a year from the Philadelphia Eagles. People were saying, oh, that looks like Boston Scott. <laughs> there are people that are like, hey, that looks like Boston Scott at the press conference. I mean, he's jacked as hell though. No, no doubt. Um, but the number one thing that Bryce Huff did talk about was why he came to Philadelphia was really because of Vic Fangio, that he puts his players, uh, in the right position to quote unquote succeed. And it's kind of, yeah, guys don't, you know, believe me or not, there are players out there that like the Vic Fangio system. Okay. There are players out there like that, but he said he is primarily, primarily, I can't even talk to they primarily here to go after the quarterback. That's where, why he's here. And, and that's where everything's going. Uh, Bryce Huff did have some interest from the giants, the commanders, really the whole NFC East almost, uh, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but you know, yeah, I mean, some stupid question. Someone was like, Oh, you think you're going to start? Like, 
Like, what's with the Philly media? Seriously, do we have idiots? Are they getting too old? Should they retire? I don't even know at this point. He's like, yeah, I got a good chance. You know, yeah, $17 million a year. I hope you have a good chance. 10 sack, you know, double digit sack season last year, you know, uh, and uh, a lot of ceiling at 25, going to turn 26. Okay. Got a young edge rusher. Um, he, he even talked about Hassan Reddick, how he's looked up to him and can't wait to get together with him. Um, he's looked up to his career even before this even happened. He's been a big fan of Hassan Reddick and tried to, you know, copy his game off of him, not copy, but kind of, sim- you know, get, get a similar uh, feel for, you know, what he does on the edge uh, in comparison to Hassan Reddick. Going forward, uh, to have both of those guys on the edges, I'm very excited for. And, uh, you know, another guy that's ready to go. We we needed it. We don't know what's going on with Josh Sweat yet. And uh, Bryce Huff seems very happy to be here and to be uh, with Dick Fangio. So that was pretty cool. Now, lastly, we're going to go over Zach Bond, the new linebacker, which a lot of Eagle fans as of right now are not really happy about because the Eagles haven't really upgraded, uh, you know, the linebacker core at all. Um, they didn't put really much money into it. You know, apparently we're waiting on a trade for a linebacker that's rumored right now for a veteran linebacker. And obviously with the draft, Edwin Cooper's coming in for an official visit. So there's a lot going on. Now, a lot of Eagles fans don't like Zach Bond that much. Okay. Now, Zach Bond, um, the main reason why he signed, another big fan of Vic Fangio. He could play the edge. He could play off-ball linebacker. He could play middle linebacker, outside linebacker. You name it, he could do it. Now, interesting enough, I mean, even with the Saints last year, I mean, really the big thing was him transitioning from an edge guy to an off-ball type guy. Um, and he says he loves playing both. He still doesn't know what where he's going to play for the Philadelphia Eagles regarding if he's going to be more outside, more on the line, or more off-ball. Uh, but he can do both. He is more of a system-type fit quarterback. Uh, uh, sorry, linebacker. Um, for Vic Fangio's scheme. Now, he hasn't really had, like, it's a one-year deal, so he hasn't really had the biggest, craziest, you know, um, you know, uh, craziest uh, career as of right now. But uh, with him, you know, his this past year with the Saints, he, he had a pretty good year. Um, so the Eagles feel like he fits here really well. And apparently, uh, TJ Edwards did talk to him. I don't know how they know TJ. Uh, I think I don't know how he knows TJ Edwards. Uh, but apparently they know each other really well and uh, said that he gave him pointers on what the the, the front office is like, the team, um, and stuff like that. So it was nice that there was at least somewhat that somebody that was here um, that talked to him about what it's like to be in Philadelphia. And um, I think he's, he's excited. I don't think this is a guy everybody should just hate. I think we should give it a chance. And not say he's going to be a superstar, but as a scheme fit, um, where you can use him in multiple ways. And Vic Fangio is going to have different fronts. He's going to be doing a lot of different things with his defense. And Zach Bond can have, you know, a big role here if he starts showing up in the offseason program, maybe preseason, and maybe we're seeing something a lot more than, you know, maybe they thought they were seeing in him. So, uh, you know, of course, it's N'Kobe Dean, it's Ben Van Simmeren, and now it's Zach Bond. It's not the best linebacker core. Got to get upgraded sooner or later. Um, So a lot to digest. Uh, but to see these press conferences, to see all these guys and, and what they think. And I like how the defensive guys come in. They say they like Vic Fangio and and they really like the way he runs his defense. That's great because a lot of people that don't like Vic Fangio and there's people, there's players that actually like him. You know, there, there are players that do like him a lot. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And Saquon Barkley just looks happy. He looks just happy and he's not going through BS and he's just going to play football and he's just going to make this team successful. and. Uh, could turn this running back core around. And I think the whole world wants to see, you know, the whole, not even just Eagle fans, the whole world wants to see what Saquon looks like behind a good offensive line with top-notch two number one wide receivers, uh, top three tight end, and Jalen Hurts extending plays. Jalen Hurts getting off that injury, getting his speed back. I mean, I think the whole world wants to see if this, this is a man that can run for 2,000 yards. I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm not even saying he's going to do that, but... I'm telling you right now, like, as a three-down back that the Eagles never had, and we've seen what he does with the Giants. We've seen what they have lacked, and we've known that he's been wasted. And let me tell you something, he will not be wasted in Philadelphia. And I can't wait till he proves his point and would rather want to retire a Philadelphia Eagle than a New York Giant. And that's will be the... That'll be the dream to keep him more than three years if he plays really well. So, 
Other than that, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. If you see a Giants fan, put your hand on his back. Give him a pat on the back. Say everything's going to be okay. You want a cookie? I don't know. Do something to make him feel better. All right? <laughs> so I'll see you guys on the next one. Shake Squad on File Slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.